we've talked about rational roots, so now let's talk about how to approximate irrational roots. And so we're going to start by looking at a theorem that's incredibly important. It's called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And what the Intermediate Value Theorem says, um, it says if P is a polynomial function with real coefficients, and m is any number between p of a and p of b, then there is at least one c between a and b for which p of c equals m. And I know that just sounds like confusing letters and stuff, so let's see a graph um, that will help you understand what the intermediate value theorem really means. So I have some polynomial function p of x, it's this curve, and I have two y values, p of a and p of b. And so p of a has the corresponding value of a there, and p of b has the corresponding value of b there. The inputs are a and b, the outputs are p of a and p of b. So if I have some number m that's in between my two y values, my function values, then I know there has to be at least one number c that's between the a and the b. So if I have a value in between my y values, there's a corresponding uh, x value in between those x values. And this is how you use this, or how you've used it. Um, if I know that I have some function value that's positive and then it switches to negative, by the intermediate value theorem I know that the zero has to between, be between where that number is positive and where that number is negative. So the intermediate value theorem allows us to figure out that we do have real roots in between when it crosses the x-axis. It goes from positive or negative or negative to positive. So if we look at this example on our graphing calculator, I have the function y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4. And if I graph it, I get this. And I know it's not hitting at a point. It's hitting really close to negative 2, but it's not actually hitting at negative 2. And it's the intermediate value theorem that tells me that there's a root right there that I can see, obviously. And I look at the table to figure out it's between negative 2 and negative 3 because I see that at negative 2, the y value is positive, then at negative 3, the y value is negative. So it's that intermediate value theorem that's telling me in between those two positive and negative numbers is the 0 that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to show you how to use your graphing calculator to shrink the interval uh, that you know the root is going to occur on. So we know by the table and by the graph that it's going to happen between negative 2 and negative 3, but that's a pretty big interval. And I can shrink that interval considerably with this technology by changing how the table counts. And I have two ways of doing this. Uh, one is to use uh, the table setup menu by pressing second and then window, and I'm going to have it start at negative 2, and then instead of having it count by 1, I'm going to have it count by a tenth, and if I go back to the table, now my table on the x's counts by a tenth, and I can check to see by the intermediate value theorem, here's a positive, here's a negative, so I know that my zero occurs between negative 2.2 and negative 2.1. And there is a special feature on our calculators, if you press the plus sign while you're in the table, it will bring up this little thing here, the change in table, so you can just quickly change your table to count by hundredths and press enter, and then you'll see that it's between negative 2.2 and negative 2.19 that the zero occurs. And then I can continually fine tune that interval. Now I know that it's between negative 2.196 and negative 2.195, and I can continually do that to shrink that interval further and further. Now here's the deal. I don't actually have an approximation of the root. What I have is the interval between which uh, the root occurs. That's not an approximation, that's an interval. So if I want an approximation, I need, to, I need a way to figure it out. And that way is called interpolation. We're going to look at a technique to actually approximate uh, numbers when you're given an interval in which the, uh, a value occurs. And it's based on 
slope, really. And it's called interpolation. And uh, there are two types of interpolation you might hear about. There's like a linear and an inverse. And it just, you know, you're finding the dependent variable when you do linear and you're finding the independent variable when you're using inverse. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's a process which can give you estimated values that are not given in a table. And the entire premise is based on slope. So let me give you uh, the what it looks like graphically speaking or what, what it is you're doing graphically speaking. So you're given only... Um, two points, x1, f of x1, x2, f of x2 on some function. And you need to find f of x sub 3 where x3 is between x1 and x2. So you have some graph and you have the x1 value and the f of x1 value and the x2 and the f of x2. And you have some table, x1, x2 function values. And you know x3 is in between these two values. And you want to basically get an approximation of what y value matches with that x value, right? So you kind of want to know what that number is. Now you don't know what the function is. All you have are data points on the function. You don't have an equation for it or anything like that. So what you do is you treat these two points as two points on a line. And you connect those two and you know that if you have two points, you can write an equation for the line and you can use the slope of the line because the slope is constant. So instead of actually finding the point on the curve, what interpolation does is it finds the point on this line. So what you're actually going to figure out is this value right here. You're going to find that y value right there, not the actual value, but an approximation of it. And the larger the interval you have, the more error you're going to have. So if you think about it, if I can shrink the interval where x1 and x2 are to, you know, maybe this point and this point, then the amount of error I'm going to have between my real y value and my approximation is going to be super, super, super tiny. And that's why I showed you how on the calculator to fine tune this interval to be something really tiny, maybe like a hundredths or a thousandths or even further. So you can get a really good approximation of your root. Now I'm going Now let's look at a couple of examples of how to use interpolation. Now this process used to be much more popular pre-graphing calculator days um, because you take for granted the fact that you can just you know press a couple of buttons like log 7 and just find the log of 7. But before you had these kind of calculators, what you had were these huge tables of values which just listed out logs of like maybe log 7, log 8, log 9, log 10. And if you wanted the log of, you know, 7.2, you had to use interpolation to get the approximation because it wasn't in your table. So uh, interpolation, as I said, is entirely based on the concept of slope, which remember is slope is the change in y over the change in x. And instead of actually finding the point um, on the function where x is 3, I'm going to find uh, a point on a line uh, to approximate. Because remember, this is just an approximation. It's not the exact value. And so this is 28, and that is 10. So this line, or the line that I'm going to use to approximate, has a slope that's 28 over 10. And so then I look at the distance between those two and call that d, some unknown. And I have the distance between that, which is 3. And remember, slope is change in y over change in x. And so now I have a proportion that I can solve. So that meant that the change between 151 and P is 8.4 approximately. And that means that if I want to approximate P, I can take 151 and add on the 8.4 to get that P is approximately equal to 159. And you don't really care about that 0.4 because it's an approximation. So that's my approximation of p. Now it works both ways. I can also find approximations on this side. Um, so if I'm trying to find an x value, like I would be if I'm trying to find the root of, of the irrational root of a polynomial, um, I'm looking for the x value, not the y value, right? Same concept. The difference between that and that is 8. The difference between those two numbers is 19. The difference between 40 and q is some unknown that I'm trying to find and 40 and 50 is 10. And so then I can set up any number of proportions. 
if I'm just going to stick with the slope, then I have 8 over c equals 19 over 10. And if I solve for c, I get that c is approximately equal to 4. And so that means that this q value is approximately equal to 40 plus 4, which is 44. And that's how interpolation works. It's just like, you know, working with slope. So let's put together the intermediate value theorem, the changing of the intervals on the calculator, and linear interpolation to approximate to the nearest hundredth the real root of this function. So I have this function typed in, I graph it, and I can approximate between which two integers my root is, and it looks like it's between two and three. So I go to my table, and I know I can verify by the intermediate value theorem since it goes from negative to positive, that it is indeed between uh, 2 and 3. And I want to approximate to the nearest hundredth. And so what that means is that my table that I'm going to use has to go by tenths. Um, since I'm trying to find the in-between hundredths, hundredths are in, between, are in between tenths. So I'm going to press plus and make my table count by 0.1 um, and so I have to look for where it changes from negative to positive. And so I set my table up. At the x value of 2.4, I have a negative 0.296. I don't know my root, but I know the y value at the root is 0. And at 2.5, I have 0 0.625. That's my table that I'm going to now use interpolation on to figure out what my root is is approximately to the nearest hundredth. And so I'm going to go ahead and set up my ratios. This unknown value of c, this unknown value of 0 0.1, this value of a uh, 0.296, and be careful of the sign, make sure you don't mess that up. And then this value of 0 0.921. So I set up my ratios, I can say, um, 0 0.296 over C is going to equal to 0 0.921 over 0 0.1 and then just solve for C and that's just basic proportion and I get C is approximately equal to 0 0.03 which means my root uh, is located at 2.4 plus 0 0.03 or approximately 2.43 and so that's the, this 2.43 is the approximation of my root to the nearest hundredth.